I work for a company called Orca Maritime. And Orca Maritime is a cutting edge underwater services company. And we have a diverse group of individuals ranging from AUV and ROV operators to GIS analysts like myself. And we have a passion for the protection and sustainment of our oceans. And we are located in Southern California and the San Diego Bay is right in our backyard. And so we have a vested interest in its health and security and we are on the bay every day doing operations. So we really wanted to come up with a GIS where we combined all of this data that we're collecting but also publicly available data so that we can make informed decisions planning our own AUV operations but also for the environmental stakeholders. So as I said, we use AUVs and we also use ROVs to collect various types of underwater data. Um, this is a video of our AUV in particular, but we collect side scan sonar, interferometric bathymetry data, CTD data, and other environmental sensors can be fitted to the AUVs. Um, the San Diego Bay is a really complex environment. It has a rich diversity of endangered and threatened species that use that habitat. And it's complex because there's all these species, but it's also a pretty urban environment if you've ever been to San Diego. And so we wanted to put together these data sets so that we could make informed decisions ourselves as advocates for the Bay and for the people that are using the Bay. So the sonar imagery that we collect, um, here's an example. And the texture in this sonar imagery can show the presence of seagrasses in the Bay. And seagrasses, uh, our essential fish habitat, as well as a habitat area of particular concern in San Diego Bay. And a lot of these native species use this to forage and also eat it themselves. Um, so we saw, this image, we saw this texture in our imagery, and we wanted to confirm that this was seagrass, and so we did ground truth surveys using remotely operated vehicles to confirm that there were seagrasses there and that there was eelgrass there. Um, to get an idea. So we knew that eelgrass grew in shallow areas, um, they're photos, it's photosynthetic, and so the swath of thermometry that we collected uh, that was co-registered with our side scan sonar confirmed that the eelgrass was in fact in the shallow areas that we had surveyed. Um, sonar imagery gives us a really interesting view of the seafloor, especially in turbid environments and environments where you might not necessarily be able to see the bottom. Uh, the sonar imagery can show us what, what is there. And so this is imagery of a, of a harbor. And as you can see, there's a lot of debris. And debris can be a real hazard, um, an entanglement hazard. So this is a lobster trap. And lobster traps will continue to ghost fish. Uh, there's also damaging sensitive habitat if there's any drag in that area, as well as being a hazard to navigation, specifically if it's located in a harbor. So we wanted to be able to get a view as to what's going on underneath of the water. And when we can combine this with publicly available vector data, um, such as marine protected areas, then we have an idea as to what areas in the bay are protected. So when we're out there and we're seeing what's happening on the water, we know what the protections are in those areas. Um, the locations of these MPAs can be overlaid with eelgrass um, here, as well as estuarine biotic habitats. And you can get an idea as to what level of protection is there. Should you be anchoring there? Should you not be anchoring there? What's underneath of the water? Um, when we really want to look at San Diego Bay, we have to look at not just the bay itself, but also the watershed that encompasses the bay. There's 40, 440 square miles of a wet, wetland or watershed management area, and that's all, it's the largest uh, WMA located in San Diego County. So whenever we look at our CTD data and we look at our water quality data, um, all of that's going to be affecting it. So this is an example of um, temperature data collected from our EX01 sond on an AUV. And we're slowly working on creating a mosaic of the entire bay using uh, this sond data. So along with temperature, we also have dissolved oxygen and a whole bunch of other sensors that we're working on testing and creating these large mosaics for the entire San Diego Bay. Along with that, we have a uh, resident sea turtle population in San Diego Bay. A lot of people don't know that, but there are 60 to 100 sea turtles in San Diego Bay. Um, this util utilization distribution is overlaid with uh, eelgrass because they also use the eelgrass in the bay. Uh, here, you see vessel density in the bay. Uh, sea turtles are almost exclusively in South Bay because vessel density is low and there's a lot of eelgrass because it's a shallow area. 
And so whenever we combine vessel density, sea turtle population, um, we can look at areas where maybe you would want to restore eelgrass because uh, eelgrass likes to be in areas with low vessel density and areas where the sea turtles are using it. So these areas in purple are going to be really good areas um, that our environmental stakeholders could um, do restoration projects. Uh, along with sea turtles, we also have the western snowy plover and the California least tern in San Diego Bay. The areas in red are the western snowy plover habitat, and the areas in purple are the least tern habitat. Threats to these species include dredging, habitat loss, nesting disturbance, pollution, and predation. Uh, using another publicly available data set, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineering dredge data, you can see exactly where these are going to conflict, with dredging being a threat to the population and seeing these, uh, these sensitive habitat areas. Special considerations can be made when doing operations, when um, dredging operations are going to be happening. And here we go. Thank you so much.